bullfight on the second day was much better than on the first. Brett sat between Mike and me at the Barrera, and Bill and Cone went up above. Romero was the whole show. I do not think Brett saw any other bullfighter. No one else did either, except the hard show technicians. It was all Romero. There were two other matadors that they did not count. I sat beside Brett and explained to Brett what it was all about. I told her about watching the bull, not so forth, when the bulls charged the picador, and got her to watching the picador place the point of his pick so that she saw what it was all about, so that it became more something that was going on with a definite end and less of a spectacle with unexplained horrors. I had her watch how Romero took the bull away from a fallen horse with his cape, and how he held him with the cape, and turned him smoothly and suavely, never wasting the bull. She saw how Romero avoided every brusque movement and saved his bulls for the last, when he wanted them, not winded and discomposed, but smoothly worn down. She saw how close Romero always worked to the bull, and I pointed out to her the tricks the other bullfighters used to make it look as though they were working closely. She saw why she liked Romero's cape work and why she did not like the others. Romero never made any contortions. Always it was straight and pure and natural in line. The others twisted themselves like corkscrews, their elbows raised and leaned against the flanks of the bull after his horns had passed to give a faked look of danger. Afterward, all that was faked turned bad and gave an unpleasant feeling. Romero's bullfighting gave real emotion, because he kept the absolute purity of line in his movements and always quietly and calmly let the horns pass him close each time. He did not have to emphasize their closeness. Brett saw how something that was beautiful, done close to the bull, was ridiculous if it were done a little way off. I told her how since the death of Joselito, all the bullfighters had been developing a technique that simulated this appearance of danger in order to give a fake emotional feeling while the bullfighter was really safe. Romero had the old thing. The holding of his purity of line through the maximum of exposure. While he dominated the bull by making him realize he was unattainable, while he prepared him for the killing. I have never seen him do an awkward thing, Brett said. You won't, until he gets frightened, I said. He'll never be frightened, Mike said. He knows too damn much. He knew everything when he started. The others can't even learn what he was born with. And God, what looks, Brett said. I believe you know that she's fallen in love with this bullfighter chap, Mike said. I wouldn't be surprised. Be a good chap, Jake. Don't tell her anything more about him. Tell her how they beat their old mothers. Tell me what drunks they are. Oh, frightful, Mike said. Drunk all day and spent all their time beating their poor old mothers. He looks that way, Brad said. Doesn't he, I said. They had hitched the mules to the dead bull. And then the whips cracked, the men ran, and the mules, straining forward, their legs pushing, broke into a gallop. And the bull, one horn up, his head on its side, swept a swath smoothly across the sand and out the red gate. This next is the last one. Not really, Brett said. She leaned forward on the barrera. Romero waved his picadors to their places, then stood his cape against his chest, looking across the ring to where the bull would come out. After it was over, we went out and were pressed tight in the crowd. These bullfights are hell on one, Brett said. I'm limp as a rat. I look and get a drink and see. The next day, Pedro Romero did not fight. It was really hard and very bad. On the day, there was no bullfight scheduled, but all day, 
and all night the fiesta kept on.